You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there's mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Now, Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. To most people, mention of the bolero and the samba mean pleasant, colorful music. But to the man called X, listen. The samba, Chief, I thought that was the name of a dance. Oh, this is serious, Ken. The samba docked here in New York Harbor early this morning. But her companion ship, the bolero, has mysteriously disappeared. Oh? In spite of the fact they had ideal sailing conditions all the way from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Where's the Coast Guard? Well, their planes have scoured every inch of the route and found nothing. Chief, what's our interest in this? Well, in the first place, Dick Finley's an old friend of mine. Oh, I know Dick. Insurance. Right. And the Bolero's cargo was insured by him for a flat 500,000 bucks. <whistles> Finley evidently smelled a rat, a big one. That's why he called me. But if he smelled a rat, why did he give such big coverage without complete investigation? Well, because John Messler, owner of the Bolero, used to be one of his biggest clients. That's the plantation. Yeah. The fact remains, the one man who can give us the dope on this thing is Dick Finley. Well, he's at work on it already. Been talking with Carl Hertzberg. He's Messler's manager and the rest of the crew of the Samba down at Pier 14. Uh, I've sent Ryan over to pick him up so you yourself can talk to him. Sorry, uh, Chief. Hello, Ryan. Yes, Ryan. Somebody else get to Finley first. What? He's down at the morgue with a 45 slug through his back. <laughs> Zelschmidt Enterprises, Pagan Zelschmidt, general manager on duty. Pagan, what under the sun is that supposed to mean? Oh, hello, Mr. X. I'm sure you'll be glad to hear that I am now in business for myself. I'm overjoyed. What business? I'm glad you asked that. I can't quite decide whether to limit myself to detective work or go in for financial consulting. Why not just settle on organized chicanery? Oh, that's a very good suggestion. And I huh? don't even know what the meaning of the word Maybe it'll come to you. Now, listen, I got a job for you down at the docks. For me? For me? You mean you, you've you come to me? This has to be handled with discretion, Pago. Well, Mr. Thurston, I shall regard your confidence as a sacred trust, especially for cash. following? Si. The same one? Si, senor. He's just not turning into this alley. Good. It's very dark along here. This will do very well. Are you quick? Here, quick. Step into this doorway. I'll walk on a little and stop to light a cigarette. That will let him catch up and we'll have him between us. Hurry now. Si, senor. One moment, my curious friend. Uh, who are you? I don't know you. Then we should become better acquainted, since you've been spying on me for two days. Oh, oh no, no. I've I never seen you before. There must be some... Who's this? A friend of mine. Oh, well, I, I'd better be going now. I don't think so. A gun? Quiet. Who are you? Well, my name my name is Zellschmidt. Egon Zellschmidt. Zellschmidt. It always helps to know who you're dealing with in such matters as this. Well, well, I'd be going now. I... Mr. Zellschmidt. Huh? Have you ever noticed what a final sound the slide of an automatic pistol makes? Wait! No, no, no! No! Come, senor, we get away fast now. Muy pronto. Wait, just to make sure. Hello. Mr. X. Now, Pig, why can't you wait till the morning? But, Mr. Thurston, something terrible has happened. What? I've been shot. I'm dead. 
I see. I see. Where are you calling from? New Jersey. Oh, it must be serious. Now that you've had your fun, Peg, I'll hang up and let me go back to sleep. Wait, you don't understand. I, I'm as good as dead right this minute. And it's all your fault. My fault? I haven't shot anybody, at least not tonight. But somebody did. And now my poor cousin Egan lies dead. Egan? He was one of my strictly list of cousins, you understand. Peg, what in heaven's name are you talking about? Oh, but, but I've just told you. It's, it's that job you wanted me to do. What? Well, I, I couldn't quite find the time to do it myself. You know, circumstances beyond my control, of course. So, so you put your cousin egg on it, eh? Go on. Well, a little while ago, the police found his body. And now I... Where did they find it? Anywhere close to Pier 14? Where else? Mr. X, you've got to do something. There's only one thing to do. Uh, yes, Mr. Thurston? I want you to take a plane immediately. Plane? And I'll meet you one week from today... In San Juan, Puerto Rico. Senor, you are Americano and you wish a room, no? Matter of fact, yes. My name's Thurston. Ken Thurston. Mr. Thurston, welcome to the Grand Palace Hotel of San Juan. Here, I have it all figured out. What? It comes to exactly $164.20. What are you talking about? That, of course, does not include the two bottles of aguardiente which were sent up to the room last night. They amount to. Now, look that... here. I just arrived from the States and I'd like a room. Oh, you already have a room. The governor's suite. Huh? Uh, your manager, Mr. Thurston, he has taken care of everything. Told us all about you, too. Oh, so that's it. Uh, just a moment now until I add up these two bodies. You wouldn't happen to know where he might be now, this manager of mine? Oh, he always sleeps very late. However, I can send up a boy. Oh, no, wait a minute. It won't be necessary. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Welcome to San Juan, which is noted for its coffee. And the senoritas are not bad either. Well, Pega, your rich American has arrived. Hmm? Oh, oh, I had to use my ingenuity, but I knew you would want nothing but the best. From the size of this bill, it looks like I've already had it. But, but you have no idea how expensive things are here. Something to do with the exchange rate, I think. Yeah, I must be terrific. Did you get my telegram? Oh, yes, Mr. Thurston. I have it right here somewhere. Never mind. I don't want it. Huh? What did you find out about Messler? Well, uh, for one thing, I found out he owns the Messler Plantation Company. Well, I told you that in the telegram. Oh. Oh, oh. Well, 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 he's very mysterious. In what way? Well, nobody in San Juan knows anything about him. He lives in a great big house on a plantation a few miles from town. And people don't see him for maybe months at a time. Well, then who actually runs the business of the plantation down there? Well, that's what you're going to find out right now. Goodbye, Mr. Egg. What? See you later. No, Pagon, hey. I'm afraid you're going to think me terribly forward, Mr. Thurston. Uh, no, that's quite all right. Hey, Pagon. Well, yes, it's uh, quite all right. Thank you. That was most complimentary. Oh, on the contrary, it was far from adequate. Miss... Miss... Uh... Messler. My uncle owns the Messler plantation. Oh. You have heard of him, perhaps? Who hasn't? But I haven't heard that he had such a lovely niece, Miss Messler. Oh, please call me Lorena. Everyone in San Juan does. Lorena. The queen. Huh. How do you happen to know me? Oh, you are far too modest, Mr. Thurston. Why, all San Juan has heard of you and what it is you are going to do. Oh, am I? I'm so excited about it. But after all, a hotel lobby is really no place to get uh, better acquainted, is it? Hardly. So, won't you please come to dinner at the plantation this evening? Please say you will. I'll be looking forward to it. And with a double reason now. You see, I've been hoping for a chance to meet the fabulous Mr. Messler. Oh? Oh, that is too bad, because, you see, it won't be possible. No? No. Unfortunately, my uncle left by plane for the States two days ago... I hope you won't be too disappointed. Oh, how could I be? After all, I've met you. You are very sweet. And I promise I will do everything I can to make your visit interesting. Come in, Mr. Thurston. How do you like our room? Not bad, eh? Hey, Gorm, what am I supposed to be doing here in San Juan? Doing? Oh, you know, look up Mr. Messler and try to find out what happened. No, no, not that. No? 
Oh, well, maybe I did talk a little too much. No. But everyone expected it, yes. So, so what could I do? What did you do? I, I think I said that you were a movie producer who was going to make a film here. So that's why she... Well, Pagan, maybe I do owe you something after all. Well, thank you, Mr. X. You haven't told that to anyone? Oh, not one soul, I swear, but the father of my father... Now, never mind your relative. Oh. What about this niece of Mester's? Does she run the plantation and the shipping the whole business while her uncle's not around? Not exactly. There's sort of a manager named uh, Carl Herzberg. Only he's not here now. Well, where is he? He sailed to New York on the Samba. Oh, the sister ship to the Bolero. Uh-huh. Yeah, that disappeared. Remember? Which reminds me, did you know that the Samba is due back here today? Yeah, I know. Good. Uh, now about what you owe me, Mr. X. Hey, uh... It comes to exactly $164.20. We're even. But part of that bill is for the car. What car? The one I rented for you. I knew you'd want it. It's very thoughtful of you. Yes, very thoughtful, as a matter of fact, because tonight, Pagan, I have a dinner engagement. Good, I'll get dressed right away. You're going to drive me there and wait outside to bring me home. Well, wait. Pagan, now comes your day of reckoning. Brandy, Ken? No, thanks. No, it's so late. I think I'd better say goodnight. Oh. Hope this won't be the last time. Oh, let us say the first of many. I hope your plans keep you here a long, long time. Perhaps they will. You know, you know you're an amazing person. Really? In what way? Well, for one thing, the way you take charge of this place in your uncle's absence. Oh, I'm used to it. You see, when he's here, he seldom leaves the house and never has anyone in. And he's always going off on some unexpected trip. He's a strange man, Ken. Well, he certainly throws a lot of responsibility on you. Oh, I'm afraid you're overrating me. Actually, our manager, Mr. Hertzberg, runs things, even when my uncle is at home. So, I'm just a very ordinary girl, after all. If you're ordinary, Lorena, the world needs more mediocrity. i got to go. Well, I'll go to the door with you. Tomorrow morning, Ken? Definitely. Oh, uh, about your movie, Ken, have you picked a star for it yet? Matter of fact, I haven't yet. Oh, well, please call on me if I can help in any way, any time. There's no one I'd rather call on for help. Oh. oh, Ken, I have been very lonely here until today. Lorena. Oh, Ken. Oh. Good night, Ken. Good night, Lorena. One moment, please, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, who are you? My name is Hertzberg. I manage this plantation. Oh, then the Samba has docked. Congratulations, Mr. Hertzberg. So? For what? For having sailed on the Samba instead of the Bolero. I didn't stop you to engage in small talk, Mr. Thurston, but rather to advise you that such scenes as the one which just occurred will not be repeated. Do your duties as manager include spying on your employer's niece? Lorena is somewhat susceptible to uh, charm, shall we say. I am not. That's kind of obvious. I'm afraid you don't understand me, nor the possible dangers of this tropical climate. It's a climate which can be quite deadly, Mr. Thurston, to someone who doesn't understand. Me. Really? Now, I like it. And you? How long have you been here? Approximately one year, but oh, I don't... do you see? You're perfectly healthy. No, Mr. Hertzberg, your argument doesn't hold water. I see. Very well. But I think you'll find that while the climate may agree with some, it can seriously disagree with others. And until it's tested, a man's personal reaction is something of an unknown quantity. A quantity which, in algebra, might be called X. Good night, Mr. Thurston. In a moment, we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, originated by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. And now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. 
Mr. X has gone to San Juan, Puerto Rico, to look up a certain Mr. Messler, who owned a mysteriously missing freight ship, the Bolero. So far, Mr. X has found neither Messler nor the Bolero, but he did have dinner last night with Messler's niece, the beautiful La Reina. But now it's the next morning, and while Pagan cheerfully carries out his assignment of scouting the local bars for local gossip, Ken sits in the office of the bank talking to the manager. And so, as you can see on the map, Senor Thurston, almost all of the plantation lands which may be available for purchase lie to the south of the city, along the main highway. Well, I had more in mind the purchase of a plantation north of town, possibly along the lake shore. Oh, unfortunately, that's impossible. A few months ago, yes, but not now. Why a few months ago? Because at that time, the Messler plantation still had uh, several lakefront tracks they were offering for sale, but they're taken now. You mean Messler's been selling off his land? Oh, the major portion of his holdings during the past year. Why? Senor Thurston, I stopped long ago trying to explain that old gentleman's reasons for anything. You know him well? Oh, I believe I've seen him only four times in all the years the bank has dealt with him. You might say that my familiarity with Senor Messler applies more to his signature than his face. I see. Well, thanks for your trouble, sir. Oh, not at all. Would you care to have lunch with me? Well, maybe another time. I've accepted an invitation to go horseback riding this morning. Hmm, in that case, I hope you find your ride enjoyable. Thanks. I have an idea I shall find it quite enjoyable. Uh, yeah, mine's gone, too. You hey, you handled that horse beautifully, Lorena. Thank you. Oh, I don't know when I've ridden like that. Oh, I'm glad we stopped here. Isn't this a lovely view of the lake? Beautiful. You get the impression you're, you're on a tropic island. We're not, though. It's really no more than a few hundred feet to the house. Then what's that long, sort of low building over there through the underbrush? Where? Oh, oh one of the warehouses. Why the man on guard with a rifle? Oh, that's Carl Hertzberg's idea. Some of the workmen were stealing things. Hertzberg seems to be quite the little watchdog. How much do you know about him? Hardly anything. My uncle hired him when the last manager left suddenly. Where did he come from? What did he do before? I don't know. I think he mentioned having been a watchmaker at one time. Watchmaker? You know, I've been a little afraid of him. In fact... I've been afraid a good part of the year I've lived here. I've been alone so much for one thing. You're not alone now. I know. And I'm not afraid now. Uh, come on, Ken. <laughs> I'll race you down to the boat landing. Uh, come on, boy. Mr. Thurston. Pagan, I began to wonder where you were. It's been very tiring work, running about all day from this bar to that bar yeah, to that, that bar. Yeah, looks like it. Did you find out anything about Hertzberg for me? Not a thing. The man is an enigmatical sphinx. Tell me, did you um, talk to any of the Samba's crew? That I did not do. My cousin Egan, may he rest in peace, peace tried that try to think in New oh, York. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yes, but local gossip has it that you can find most of your questioning to a little number named... Rosita. Is that right? Mr. Thurston. Miss, she's strictly business of the expense account type. I, I have found Rosita to be a bottomless well of information. Strictly business. Pagan, you're slipping. Now, listen. You better rest up from your tiring day because tonight we're going to have a try at breaking into a warehouse. And it's guarded. Good. Why are we going to do it? Well, for one thing, I've always resented no visitor's signs. What's more, we may find Mr. Messler there. Or what's left of him. Mr. Messler flew to the States three days ago. Why, the senorita said so. Messler must have been having a little joke with her pig on According to the passenger list at the airport, he hasn't taken a plane out of here. by the door, Mr. Thurston. How's the guard, Pagan? Still out cold? Like a fish. Good. You haven't heard anyone outside? Only the crickets. Hmm. Did you find Mr. Messler? Yeah. Where is he? I mean... I'll tell you later, Pagan. We oh. haven't got much time. Come on now. Try not to fall over anything in the dark. 
One more thing I'd like to find, and I think it may be here in the warehouse. Wait a second. Uh-oh. Steel door. The door? Is it locked? I can't find the... No, it isn't. Let's have a look. Easy now. Watch your step. Some kind of a little room. Empty, maybe. Maybe empty now, but... No, it isn't. Still several cases here. What's in there, Mr. Thurston? Wait a minute. I'll strike a match. You do, and you'll find yourself wearing a halo. Those are cases of dynamite. The, di- the dynamite? No, Mr. Thurston, we'll go now, right now. We'll go, hmm? Not yet. What? Uh... I have a gun here that says neither one of you is going anywhere. <clears throat> well, Mr. Hertzberg, so the little watchdog is still on duty. Unfortunately for you, Thurston, it's too bad you didn't take my advice and leave this unhealthy climate. Leaving Puerto Rico didn't help the 21 seamen on the Bolero very much. Oh, so you found the answer to that. Look, dynamite, a missing ship. A watchmaker who could easily rig up an efficient time-detonating device. All makes the problem rather simple. Quite so. Now, will you be kind enough to toss your gun over toward the door, Thurston? Sorry, I'm afraid I can't. You see, I don't have a gun. Fine. In that case... In that case, just think of what will happen if you fire toward these cases of dynamite. So, we seem to reach a temporary stalemate. Well, that's your move, Hertzberg. I think I'll postpone it for the moment. At least until I go liquidate a gold mine. However, just to make sure I can still find you here. There. Amuse yourselves, gentlemen. I won't be gone long. Phew. I have just died a million times, Mr. Thurston. But what did he mean? What's he going to do? You have an idea. Mr. Thurston, we've got to get out of here. She's going to come back. We can't just... Not quite, quite, quite. Somebody's out there. Ken. Lorena. Then you expected her? Hardly. In here, Lorena. Oh, Ken, I have found you. You're all right. Fine. How did you happen to come here? It's Carl. I followed him. Oh, Ken, he's done something terrible. I don't know what. I even think my uncle may be held prisoner here instead of being in the States. He was... What was that? Yes, Lorena. Mr. Nestler was being held prisoner. Then Carl's killed him. And now he'll come back here and kill us. Ken, you've got to do something quick. What would you suggest? You have a gun? No. Nope. I brought one here. When he comes back here, you must shoot first. It's our only chance. La Reina, the Queen. What? And with me cast as chief executioner in the double cross of her partner. So there'll be no spitting of the spoils. Uh, I don't know what you mean. No, you told me your uncle took a plane to the States three days ago. Well, that's what Carl said. He said he took him to the airport. Oh, it isn't very flattering to be regarded as a complete fool. What are you saying? La Reina, three days ago, Carl was on board the Samba, 500 miles at sea. You... Somebody's coming, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, uh, here. Look out, Carl. Mr. X has a gun. Carl! No. I doubt very much that Carl will be able to hear you, La Reina. You! My thanks for the loan of your gun, Mr. Thurston. It came in very handy, just as you thought it might. Who are you? Permit me to introduce myself. I am John Messler. Ah, uh, Mr. X, I'm beginning to see the light. Sure. Messler's habit of seldom showing his face outside his house was well known. So it was easy for them to hold him prisoner in the cell of that warehouse for nearly a year. Starving him. Forcing him to sign the deeds and checks necessary to convert the estate into cash. Mr. Thurston, it has all become as clear to me as a... Uh... As this wine? Yes, please, just a little more. Uh, thank you. And Lorena... She's not Mr. Messler's niece? Just an enterprising lady who teamed up with Carl Hertzberg and came here about a year ago. Ah, women. They're fleas in a life ointment. I say it's a pretty thirsty flea you've had on the expense account for the past week. Uh, Rosita? Strictly an ex-business acquaintance. Uh, since when? Well, since I discovered a horrible fact, Mr. Thurston, I found Rosita cared only for my money. Which is to say, your money, of course. There's a nice distinction running around there. Money. <laughs> Nothing yet. Uh, after all, what is it? Just money. It means nothing at all to me. This wine is wonderful stuff. I'll have to take some along just for financial purposes. Uh, you know, there is one thing that is not quite clear to me yet. Why did they want to sink their own boat? That seems very silly. For the insurance, Pagan. Oh. The Valero was heavily insured. That's why the Bureau first became interested in their disappearance. Of course, to a man like you, to whom money means nothing, half a million dollars would seem silly. <laughs> Thank you. 
And our Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And please let me remind you that daylight saving time goes into effect in some parts of the country next week. So if your area remains on standard time, tune in one hour earlier for our broadcast. As usual, Leon Velasco will be along as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, where next I return as the man called X. Good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. When you read about people being injured, people being killed in traffic accidents, do you ever stop to think, why, that might have happened to me? It's worth thinking about, and it's worth doing something about. The best thing to do is to obey all traffic laws. Yes, whenever you drive, whenever you walk along streets or highways, be careful. The life you save may be your own. This is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. Remember, if your community remains on standard time, tune in one hour earlier next week for Frigid Air's Man Called X. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.